So, you guys want to learn C++. And you're wondering yourself, how the hell do I learn C++? Just the basics. I have no idea how to code at all. I don't know what I'm going to do. And what am I going to do to just learn C++? So you find yourself, all right, what am I going to do? Well, the first thing I'll do is I'm going to go online. And, I'm, and I don't have any compiler. I have nothing, really, to be honest. I have, like, nothing, no compiler, nothing. So how do I get started? Well, the first thing you do is you type in online. C++ compiler and you click the first thing that you see online GDB right and then it, it pops up all the stuff that you have no idea how to do and you don't know what you're gonna do to get started so well, what this video is gonna tell you guys is how are you gonna learn C++ and what am I gonna do to teach you to C++ and, and in fact how can you learn C++ all right so this is gonna be this video series is gonna be teaching you guys the basics of C++ for someone who has no idea how to code with someone who has no clue and just got started so you just opened up a basic C++ compiler now you're thinking to yourself, how the hell, what, what are all these things? Well, for starters, C++, the code has to run something, right? So let's actually just, let's just like delete everything because screw this. And let's just start with the basics. So here we have main.cpp, all right? Now, if I just run this, technically, it's not going to do anything, right? It's going to give me errors because like, first of all, it has nothing to do. It's not going to do anything, right? Because we don't know what, how would the, how is the code going to start if there's no code there? right so what, what does the program need to do the program needs to start somewhere so where does it start code starts in main this is the starting point of all c++ code at least most of the time all right so it starts in main what is this main main is a method or function where it starts where the program starts and it's going to run from start to finish well first of all if i try running this what is it going to do well, well, it just finished, right? Program finished with exit code zero. Exit the console. But I, uh, but I can't do anything, right? I can't do much here. It doesn't tell me anything. It's just int main, right? Now, you might be wondering yourself, what is this int? What is int? Well, in C++ and coding, we kind of just want to, we want to put abbreviations over everything, right? Because if, if you don't, if we don't, if we don't abbreviate anything, it's just harder to type things. So in just like in computers and just like in math and the world in general, we have integers, right? There's numbers. How do you represent numbers in, in computers? They're integers. So what does INT represent? INT is just short for an integer. Okay. So now my, you guys might be wondering what is int main then? What is the point of int main? What is the point of this? Well, main is where the code starts, right? I just told you guys, it's a function. I said it's a function where the code starts and it ends. And why do I have these curly brackets? These curly brackets tell me where it's where my function is gonna start from main and where it's gonna end in main, right? These curly brackets, the first starting point, a left curly bracket, last starting point, right curly bracket. These are braces. Now, think about this. Um, Functions just like functions in C++ and just like functions in math remember f Functions in math in in algebra or geometry or grade school. Well, what are functions? They start they take an input and they, they return an output Right if I said like a function y equals 2 times x, right? I pass in an x value and I spit back out 2 times x. That'll be your y value Well, that's the same thing in programming in main is just a function that tells you something. Now, ideally, it has to return something, right? Because I took in an input, it has to return an output, right? Now here, I didn't have to write any output or input and it just ended because, I don't know, that's just how the compiler works here. But ideally, in most C++ code, you have to return a number because it's an integer, right? Uh, it's an int main. I'm returning an integer. This is the return type. Return type is an integer. So ideally, uh, if you want in C++, when you want to return something, in main, we return zero. Why do we return zero? In C++, zero is represents I executed fine, right? When I do any other number, like one, a negative one, stuff like that means you, you an error occurred normally, like I said, failed. 
So this is what it does. All right, int main is just a function that starts your program in main and it just returns zero. Now, if you were to run this, it just it doesn't do anything, right? If program finished, executed code zero. So now you got you guys might be wondering, well, how am I gonna how am I going to actually print anything? Right? I want I want to have fun in coding, right? I want to print something to the screen. I want to do stuff. Well, first of all, unless you write your own print function or you write your own input and output function, the code is just the code. Right in this file, the only thing that the program and the computer sees is just everything in this file. So if I want to actually print something, I need to write code that actually prints it, or I could import import code that someone else wrote that prints out to the console. So that's what I'm going to do in here. I'm going to import a code, include a code that someone else had already made for me so I could print out to the console. Otherwise, the program doesn't know where to run and it doesn't know how to print things out to the console screen. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do hashtag include and put these left uh, less than sign greater than sign. And I'm going to do IO stream. And what does IO stream represent? IO stream represents input output stream. Input output stream just means I'm going to print out to the console and I'm going to I could read in values from the console. So that's what this represents. So here now, now I have code right now. I have the code that allows me to read in values and print out values. So now in, um, in C plus plus, a lot of your code is structured in these things called namespaces, which is like, it's like a con conglomeration of code, right? So if I want to print out something to the console, I need to basically declare get my val uh, the, the code that I have for my namespace of where the printout uh, to print out values of it and then use that as a way to print values out to the console. So in that case, the namespace, we're going to use STD. I don't know why they call it STD, but that's just how it is. So what, how do I print values out to the console? Simple. It's called C out. So I have STD colon colon C out. Now I could print any value I want out to the console. So I, let's say I want to print out 10. Then I'm going to use C out less than less than 10. And I'm going to just put a semicolon. In, in programming, semicolons are the ways you end your statements. They help you end your statements. So if you have a semicolon, it means you're basically you ended your statement. Now if I run this, click a run, it's, it's just going to print out 10. Now. What if I want to print out 20, right? What if I want to print out 20? So I'm going to do STD C out 20, right? I want to print out 20 and then I print out 10, 10 and then 20. If I run it, well, it's actually going to print out values side by side, 10 and then 20. And why does it do that? Well, because in the program's eyes, it basically just said, I'm just going to print out 10 and I'm going to print out 20. But as for me, I want to actually print out new lines, right? I want to print out a new line. So in order to do that, there's another way to do it using the console statement. And that's called, we're going to use less than less than end L. End L means end line, at least how I think it is. It's just going to end the line from where you're at. And then we're just going to start to the next line. So now if I run the code again, well, whoops, what did I do wrong? And L was not declared in scope. Oh, whoops, my bad. It has to be STD and L. Yeah. Yeah. Then we then we could print out 10 and then 20. And it does it does its new line. Uh, so why does it why do we need uh and L? Because uh, why do we need STD? Because STD is a namespace for we need to get our values of our code from in order to put things out to the console statement. So that's why. So now um, what we could do also in C++ is that if I don't want to rewrite the same namespace, rewrite this, uh, this library or this thing to import my code in over and over again, I could use something called using STD, using namespace STD. So then what this is going to do is now I don't have to repeatedly write STD over and over again from the area that I am printing out to the console statement. 
So now if you see this, A, I don't have to write STD over and over and over again. So that's the thing, that's what allows us to, basically allows us to print things out to the console statement. Okay, now you might be thinking to yourself, well, this is really boring. All I could do is just print things out to the console. Well, you see there's 10, 20. I only could print things out to the console. How, this is, is that all there is to coding? Well, not really. You could also read in values to the console. But to read in values, how do you read in values, right? Well, let's think about life. Let's just think about life, all right? So if, if I imagine myself just want to represent anything in life, as something in a computer screen, right? Well, what, what do I have? What, what can I do if I want to represent things? Well, I got numbers, right? I got numbers. I could represent them as uh, integers, 10, 20. But what if I want to represent values like, I don't know, decimals, right? How to represent decimals? Well, it's pretty hard to represent decimals. Um, you, need a, you need a dot, right? You need a dot to represent decimals. So just having numbers, integers, that's not going to help you. So what do we have? We have something called floats. Float. Float is basically just the same thing as an integer, except now you have decimals. So if I want to create a value for, I don't know, a variable, we're going to create a variable, a float. Let's create a variable, right? Just like in math. Variables are ways to help you store values, all right? They're basically, they help you store values for your your anything that you want in C++. So just like in math, we're going to store values. So let's actually create a variable. We're going to call this float x. It's going to equal to, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, 12.3, 12.4 or whatever. Now, now if I just do C out and I print this float, it should print out 12.4 when I run it. Booyah, 12.4. So print it out 12.4. So now, now we think about ourselves, well, now we have integers and we have floats. But what about things that I need, right? What about like, um, there's other things I need to represent in life as code, right? And what is that? Well, there is something called Booleans. What if, what if I want to represent things like true or false, right? Things that are on or off, something, something could be true, something could be false. Well, we could represent that. That's called Booleans. So now we have Booleans. In C++, we call this a bool. And what is this? Let's actually create a variable. I'm going to create a variable that's called, uh, I don't know, y, right? We're going to set this variable y is going to equal to a value. And Booleans are just true and falses. So I could set this as true. Or I could set it as false. So now, now when I print out my um, my values for my Boolean, it should tell me what it should, it should print out my Boolean values. So I'm going to print out, now I'm going to get rid of this X, right? So remember I had 12.4 before. Now let's actually print out, uh, let's just print out Y. All right. I'm going to print out Y and print out a new line. So let's see what this does. Okay. So what's weird, huh? That's weird. So here I created a variable called Y and I set equal to true. And then I printed out the value of y after I printed out the value of x. So why is the value of y true equal to 1, right? I printed out y, this should return true. So in C++, anything that is uh, not 0 is called true. Okay, uh, it's kind of weird. I know it's weird. But anything that's not 0 is basically true. So if I had like uh, 5, I don't know, if, Five, that's technically considered true. Eight is technically considered true, but yeah. So yeah, so now we basically, I basically explained to you guys uh, how to create variables and um, basically uh, these types, different types already. So let's go back to the gist of creating variables. So here we have, how, how, do, you, how do you create a variable? Well, you, you tell the type you wanted to have, which is like floats, or boolean or integer then you give the name of the variable so this is going to be the name of the variable i call it x and then we set it equal to a value so equal to a certain value 12.4 12.5 13.5 whatever it is 
and that basically just tells you how to create variables. So now we have Boolean, which is true or false. Why? It's going to tell you true or false. So what other type of variables can I create? Um, so we have currently we have uh, true and false, right? But what if I want to have like put out like uh, I don't know characters? You know what I mean? Characters, like the alphabet, the English alphabet. So how do I write that? Well, in uh, C plus plus. We abbreviate characters as char. So here we have char. And let's name it, I don't know, Z. And I'm going to set it equal to, I don't know, the character Z. So this is how you create a character in C++. Create a character variable called in uh, C++. So we're going to do char Z is going to equal to, these are uh, single quotations. So in for characters, we have these single quotations that basically just tells you, hey, this is a this is a single quotation, so this is a character. And if we were to just print out Z now, C out Z, it should just give out Z. Yeah, so we have 12.4, which is our value of X, C out Y, which is one, and then we have Z, which is uh, just prints out Z. So that's basically the gist of this, all right? That's the gist of creating variables. Um, so yeah, once you create a variable, you could have, once you create a variable, it's, uh, it's, you created a variable, you could print it out. Now, now let's get down to it. Um, what if I want to have a multiple, if I want to change the value of a variable, right? So here I have float X is equal to 12.4, right? So here I'm going to get rid of the printing out the values of X and Y of Y and Z. So here we have float X equal 12.4. Now, um, what if I want to change this value? Well, it's easy. If I want to change the value of this variable, I just set X to something else. Uh, let's say X to 15.7 or something, right? Now, then I just have to print out the value of X again and the value of X changes, right? So here we have 12.4. And then now it becomes 15.7. So that's basically how you do variables. Um, variables, you could change things. You could change things uh, in the middle of it, stuff like that. Now, what if I don't want to change this variable? Well, like at all, right? Well, first of all, you don't. You what you could do is you could just not set it, not change it at all, like not set x equal to something else. But what if I want to force people to not ever change it? Like, I want it to remain as 12.4. Well, some people want to do that. And if I want to force people to not change this, change the variable x, what am I going to do? I just put const in front of it. Const means constant. That means it will always be constant. This const float x will always be 12.4. So now when I change, try to change it to 15.7, it should throw an error. Yep. Booyah. Now, whenever the, anyone else wants to change this variable X, it's going to throw an error. So then you can't change it. Now the value has to be 12.4 forever, right? So I have to, when I print out X, this float variable of X is always going to be 12.4. So you can't do anything anymore. All right. Your variable is just going to be stuck here forever. All right. And you could do that to the same for any of these values. Actually, you could do this const for y, const for z. You could do do this for all the characters, anything you want. It's now constant. So you can't do anything. You can't change this y. If I want to set y equal to false, it's going to throw an exception. It's going to give me error, false. It's read only. So you can't change anything. So I basically explained to you guys the basics of uh, floats, booleans, and chars. But what if I want to print out like a whole whole list of characters, right? Whole list of characters so, like chars, the Z. Well, um, I can't just if I try to like put characters together, it's not gonna allow me to do that. So in C plus plus, we can't actually put more than one character together. So if I do char Z, is the character Z? What if I want to print like Z Y, right? Z Y. Put Z Y here. Um, ideally this, it's not going to allow you to do that. If I print Z now, I should throw an exception. Oh, wow. 
yeah, oh well, it, it, it finished, but it didn't had this weird thing here, squiggle line. So uh, characters in C++ for char Z only allow you to have one letter, okay, one character. So one letter, the alphabet, yeah, so on and so forth. It doesn't allow you to have more than one character. So what do you do then? Um, so in C++, you could also use something called strings, which shows basically just multiple letters concatenated together, all right? So the multiple letters put together. So here, uh, if I want to include a string, I'll just do include string. And then it should now allow me to have multiple characters. So now uh, if I want to create a string, so string multiple letters, right? I'll create a variable called multiple letters. Now I could actually create, um, have multiple letters. So I could do have a Z, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So now, um, when I print out, print this out, it should allow me to have multiple letters. So yeah, see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. You print it out in the end here. So um, care, here's a big careful when you do difference between strings and characters. So in for characters, like right, just one single character, you have only have uh, single quotations, right? See this single quotations. For multiple multiple characters for strings, uh, it's double quotations, double quotations. So you need to use that, all right? Okay, so basically, guys, I, I just explained to you how to create variables. And um, yeah, now, uh, I think I, I, I did go over the functions, but let's, uh, let's actually do some more functions, actually. So let's go over some functions. Um, so uh, remember, we have int main, right? This is the main function and it returns an integer, right? And here it returns zero. And that basically just tells the code the program that, hey, I compiled successfully, I'm just gonna return zero. And zero means I'm just gonna finish after this main. But what if I wanna print out another function, right? What if I wanna write another function? Well, simple. What if I have like, uh, I'll just do the same thing. So first I have to specify what type of function it is. So it could be float, boolean, character, I don't know. So let's say I wanna do float. And let's say I just wanna do, I don't know, two, okay? So in this float, I'm just gonna return 2.5 or something. So then this function, float two, uh, actually let's do float two five, right? This function is gonna have, is gonna return a float, a variable of a float, and it's just gonna return 2.5. And if I want to print this, all I have to do is I got to do C out, print this function. So now I should have 2.5 afterwards. Yep, 2.5, 2.5. So you, now you might be wondering, okay, so now I have a function. I could create functions and return values for the function. But what if I want to take an input, right? So remember in math, like basic math, you functions take an input and then it spits out an output, right? So I have like, uh, let's say I take an X, I spit out two X, Y, spit out two Y or something, I don't know. Um, that's the same thing in C++, right? Uh, so here what you could do is you could actually, in these, uh, these parentheses, these par left parentheses and right parentheses, this parentheses actually tells you what the, the inputs you want for your function. So here, if I want to input, I don't know, uh, integer, an integer variable x, and I just want to multiply return 2.5 times x, right? I just do return 2.5 times x. So yeah. Um, so in C++, these are uh, uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, all work. Um, it's the same thing how you would do it. It would just be like uh, the, here, this would be division, this would be plus, this would be minus, and it's multiply, All right? It still works the same thing as uh, regular, regular things. So now if I try to run this, it's gonna give me an error. Uh, why is there give me an error? Because uh, this function, 2, 5, requires an input, an input variable of x, and it's returning 2.5 times x. In here, when I'm just printing out 2, 5, 
I'm not actually inputting anything. So that's why it's giving me an error. So if I want to input something, I don't know. What am I going to do? I'm going to just put like uh, any number, I guess. So here, what I could do is uh, I could create like an any uh, an, a variable called, uh, I don't know, 2. It's just going to have a value of 2. So integer 2, have value of 2. And I could just pass that variable into this function. And then it would just spit me out 2.5 times by 2. So that will give me 5. Okay. Another thing I could do is I could do, uh, I could even put like the actual numbers. I don't have to put in variables. I could do like three and it's, it's, and if I print out two, five, three, it's going to do 2.5 times three. So yeah, it would give me a 7.5. So that's basically the gist of functions. Functions allow you to basically take an input and it spits out an output. All right. That's basically in functions. Now, um, what if I try to move this function down underneath main? So I take this and move this and then put it underneath main. What would happen? If I run it, it gives me an error. Why does it give me an error? Two five was not declared in the scope. All right. So what is the issue with this? The thing in C++ is that when it reads something, it reads it from top to bottom. It reads in the code from top to bottom. Here, it, what it's doing is it's going to read in all these this line by line. And it goes to main. It starts from main. It goes through all this code. Then it says, hey, I'm going to run 2.5. But 2.5 does not exist. So it, it throws, it gives you an error. It throws an exception, it gives an error. Why doesn't 2.5 exist? Because my function that I wrote here is below the main function so when it's reading through line by line going down to 2 5 it doesn't know where 2 5 is yet because the 2 5 is underneath main so that's an issue so how would you fix this well there's two ways to fix it one way is to always have all your functions to be above main so i could put all my functions above main and if i run it it'll be fine right because it's going to read in from top to bottom and it reads in, Hey, there's two five. There's a function two five. That's all right. And then it goes down to main main goes down to main. It starts executing, go, goes through all these lines, line by line by line. And then it hits two five. It realizes, Hey, I've seen two five before it's on the top. I go to the top. I print out my val functions and my values. I return the values and it does that. But what if I don't want this? What if I don't want to have all my functions above main? How do I do that? Okay. Whoops, my bad. So here, um, let's say I have a function below main. What am I going to do? Um, simple thing you could do is um, you could say, hey, I'm just going to declare a function and I'm not going to have any tell you, tell you anything, right? I'm not going to tell you anything, what it is, what's inside of it. And then until it reaches to the bottom of the code, then I'll tell you something. You could do that. What do you do to fix it? It's what this is going to be called prototyping. Basically, what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the first line of the function, the top of the function. So like float two five integer x. I'm just going to copy this and put it above main. Then I'm going to put my semicolon. This is going to be just declaring that hey, this function exists two five it exists. I'm not going to tell you what it does yet until it reaches to the bottom, but just know that this exists. And then when you do hit it, you could just find it, find it in the bottom, anywhere in the line in this file. So now if you run this, it, the code does run. Okay. So now, uh, basically if you want to put functions below main, all you have to do is you just have to copy the first line of the function function name put it above your main method and put a semicolon and then it will just tell you what it is this is called prototyping basically the prototyping is just copying the function signature and putting it on the top so what is a function signature function signature is just the, the return type of the function the name of the function and the inputs the, the parameter inputs that you pass in that's what it is so yeah I hope you guys enjoy this video. This is just a simple quick uh, beginning video on 
functions and variables. I know uh, my previous C++ tutorials were not very uh, cohesive and not very, it was pretty difficult to understand, but now this is for beginners and I'll help you guys learn C++. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.